Captain's Log, Tuesday, the 25th, 1821.1. So ends day four of our boreal internment. Outside, the storm rages on, assaulting our meager dwelling with a barrage of snow and ice and consuming us in its unyielding, bitter cold. But inside, it is colder. Morale is low, tension is high. We're at our wit's end not only with our situation, but with each other as well. As I write this, I look around me at my fellow players in this tragic farce. Michael Terry, our leader. He's tried valiantly to remain calm during the last three days, but just as the trapped wolf eventually chews off its own leg, so too must. So too must. He is getting fed up. Eleanor James. Scared, exhausted, and if I may be candid, downright malodorous. This ordeal has been hard on her, and she's made sure every one of us knows it. Walt, our friend from the city. This is the longest he's ever gone without donuts. I'm not sure how much longer he can last. And Nicole, 17 years old and putting up the bravest fight of us all. She should be back home with her family, instead of here, a million miles away. And so we sit, hungry, angry, sleepy, bashful and dark. How did it come to this? How did we find ourselves in this horribly precarious situation? And will we ever live to tell about it? What's that? The door! The door! The door. Okay, we are now. Are you at the police? No, sir. I'm with LFBSR. Lower Fraser Valley Search and Rescue. Uh -huh. Team Specialist Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer? No relation. Are you uh, Dr. Michael Terry? Yes. We found your flatbed off Rail Route 6. Uh... That's where we left it. You see, you see we, we, we've been here for four days. <laughs> I'm aware of that. We've been an all-out safety blitz looking for you. Police, RCMP... Oh, thank God you found us. Now we can go home. <laughs> uh, hang tight, ma'am. I'm afraid we're still looking at fourth and long here with a little time left in the clock. Excuse me? Unfortunately, as of 0900 this morning, I got separated from my unit. Again. Oh, what? You lost two? Separated. Right. Separated. Mm. Big difference, sir. I've been trying to call in, but the battery's fading. It's like the bunnies stopped going. So, so you're saying that we're not actually saved? Oh, relax, man. Command knows my search area. Matter of time before they zero in on us. How much time? Oh, definitely by sometime tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Is she gonna be okay? It's been a rough four days. We're never gonna get out of here. We're all gonna die. Don't start that again. We should have just stayed with the truck. You should have stayed with the truck, then we wouldn't be here. Oh, right. It's my fault, isn't it? Yeah, it is, actually. Time out! Time out! Step off. Take a deep breath. We'll be out of here soon, so let's behave like that. Hey, look at trombone. Yeah, actually, I could play something. If you... <laughs> no! No, 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 where do we start? Don't give up on a tough teenage. Give me a call when you need a change. Hey! City kids, come on off that street. Come on off that street. Work it out to a different beat. Take a walk outside. Get on the range and ride. Right. Some
ashes. No, okay, lift up. Hold your arms. Open one more. Oh. So, tell me, how'd y'all get stuck out here? Well, it all started when Ron busted out of the truck. And mom would be? Uh, Buffalo. <laughs> I don't believe it. That kid is amazing. Well, that is what most people would call a buffalo. He's actually riding Ronnie. You see, Ron is a member of a species of the wild cattle genus bison, or North American bison, commonly but erroneously referred to as a buffalo. The bull, or bison bison, stands more than six feet high and weighs as much as a ton. Once, they roamed the vast prairies of North America in the millions. But now, sadly, Ron is one of the 35 or 50,000 bison that remain, roaming no longer. Well, that is until he busted out a truck. So what happened then? Well, then they went into the woods to find him. I told them not to. I remember saying, Just leave him. The weather's turning. Michael! You don't know this area. We don't want to get lost. You don't want to come? Fine. Who needs you? But you heard on the radio. There's a storm coming. I really think that we should... Nobody cares what you think. My buffalo was out there. My soulmate, my pal, my brother. If I have to sacrifice everybody to bring him back, then so be it. Okay. Oh, come on. If you're going to tell the story, at least tell it right. The buffalo ran into the woods. So we all followed it into the woods. That's the trail he took, Michael. He took that trail, that one. Eleanor, Eleanor, I'm sure he went downhill towards water. Animals always head towards water. No, no, he went up toward the mountains. Up, I Why? say we go up. Why would he go up? Because, Michael, the view was better from there. He could see the ranch house. He could go back to the ranch house. I'm going up. I don't care if you guys don't go up. Eleanor, get back down here. No, Michael, he went up. I'm serious. I'm always right. Especially when it comes to things I know nothing about. Come on! Okay, I don't care if you don't come up or not. It doesn't matter to me. I can find it myself! Oh, give me a break. That's not what happened at all. You didn't lead us up the wrong path? Well, we shouldn't have been chasing the buffalo to begin with. You made us drag the buffalo across the uh, valley in the first place. Yeah. Time out. Time out. Now, let's back up a bit. We took the truck and we headed over to the Hernix Ranch. We being? Vic, Nicole, and me. We, we were gonna pick up their buffalo. Well, or so we thought. There she is. Beautiful. Yeah, she's a fine one, my Elsa. Strong yet supple. Chief? Oh, uh, no, thank you. Mm, procreation's a fickle business, Miss James. Most bison mate in the summer. But Elsa here is ready to jump on the nest right now. Temperature's accurate, and she's been grunting something fierce. You actually take your temperature? Yeah, every day. Stick a thermometer right up. Oh, uh, no, it's okay. I get it. Never mind. Forget it. Um, why don't we uh, put, load her into the truck? Try, no, 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 no. Elsa ain't going nowhere. I want you to bring your boy out here. But I thought we already discussed this. I mean, we borrowed the truck and we drove out here and everything. Uh, have you ever been on many dates, Miss James? Excuse me? When a boy and girl go out on a date, the girl don't come to the boy. The boy comes to the girl. Fact of nature. Now, why do you tell me how the buffalo got lost? Well, he was you. You talk. Okay. Well, let's see. Well, I don't know if you know, but Michael runs a ranch for kids, and I... Oh, I know all about the Terry Ranch. 
Oh, in fact, my cousin's neighbor's son had a stay there. His name's, uh, Ed. Maybe you remember him. God. Uh, it rings a bell. Vaguely. So, anyway, Nicole here. It was her last day at the ranch, and I went out there. See, Nicole was the only kid staying at the ranch. Am I telling this story or what, Vic? Go for it, Ace. So, anyway, I went out there to bring her home since I was the first one to bring her there. I was in kind of a hurry to get back to the city, so uh, I tried to get the ball rolling. All packed. Anything else I can do for you fine people? No, we're uh, pretty well ready to go as soon as she gets off the phone. Did Eleanor tell you we have to make a stop first? Yeah, something about the buffalo. Yeah, we have to drop it off in the neighbors. Hmm. Does he uh, play that thing often? Yeah, it's pretty well a 24-hour-a-day gig. Hmm. Doesn't bother me. I just can't help but think of the, the kids. I know. Vic! Get over it already! Oh, I have never shouted like that in my life. Okay, this is my story, but I'll put it to the group. Did she shout like that? Yes. Yeah. Now, may I continue? So, Nicole, you excited about going home? N nervous. Yeah. yeah, but that's okay. Remember, your mom's going to be nervous, too. And how are we going to deal with it? Talk. Beautiful. Let her know how you're feeling. And remember to listen, too. Communication is a two-way street. Thank you all. Go and say goodbye to the horses before we leave. Yeah, sure. Oh, wow. Walt, you have given her some amazing help. No, I, I can't take credit for her success, Michael. It's you. No, no, it's you. I mean. You just have this natural ability to help kids in trouble. It's amazing. They, the way they look up to you. And, Walt, I want you to know that I really look up to you. I just try to be their friend, you know. No, it's more than that. It's something deep, deep within you, Walt. You're amazing. You're just so focused on the important things in life. How do you do it? Well, you know, it all started very long time ago, when I was a very small boy living in the big city. We lived at a busy street corner in the neighborhood of near Do wells I used to help old ladies across the street. Sometimes they wouldn't even want my help, but I'd help them anyways. Excuse me. Um, no offense, but... Would you mind sticking to the story here? Well, there's not much to tell, really. We were going to drop the buffalo off before bringing Nicole back to the city. And after that, the ranch was going to be empty for eight days. We were all kind of looking forward to the time off. It was going to be our first vacation in a long time. As I recall, we just hopped in the truck and no, drove no, off. No, 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 no. Back up. Back up. Nobody just hopped in and went anywhere, Eleanor. You were on the phone. Vic was upstairs blasting his horn, and I was running all over the place trying to get everything organized. No, I'm going to fly right to Seattle, and I'll meet you at the hotel. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know I can't wait. We're going to be like a couple of college girls set loose in the big city, shopping, talking. And... No. I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to seeing you. We'll catch up on all the old days. Okay. Great. Bye. Keep at it, Vic. It's getting better all the time. Hi. You want to talk about your problem? Hi. How's it going? I'm hurrying, Eleanor. I only got two hands. Count them. One, two. Gee. How you doing? You all ready to go home? <sighs> yeah. Kind of scared, though. Oh, that's okay. Whenever you're feeling sad or lonely or depressed or frustrated, or even if you're feeling happy, talk.
talk to your mom about it. And make sure she talks to you about her own feelings, too. <laughs> because you know what? Communication is a two-way street. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> Anytime, honey. Hey. Are we gonna get going or what? Oh, right. I've got to get Vic and load that buffalo. <laughs> oh, and I was letting Vic use my room to practice his trombone. Have you come to hear me play? Well, no, actually, we need you outside to help load the... The Buddha speaks of four noble truths. Existence is suffering. The cause of suffering is desire. There is a cessation of suffering called nirvana, and nirvana can only be reached through the trombone. Wait a minute, Eleanor. Don't you think you have the dynamic a bit skewed here? Oh, I'm just telling her what happened. Yeah, well, I saw it a little differently. Vic, you don't really remember playing like that, do you? Well, I admit my C-sharp needs work, but yeah, don't you remember it that way? What the hell are you doing? I was just practicing. Oh, you're supposed to be outside helping Michael load the buffalo, not in here blowing wind. Sorry, guess I lost track of it. So what else is new? Oh. So remember, it's not just about talking, it's also about listening. Because communication is a two-way street. Thanks, Vic. When are we going to hit the road? I'm getting hungry here. What? I said, when are we going to hit the road? In a minute. I just got to get Ron loaded. What's that cord for? I need it to tie the gate shut on the back of the truck. Tie the gate shut? You mean you haven't fixed the latch yet? I haven't had a chance to fix it yet. You've had three days. Don't worry, Eleanor. The cord will hold. The gate's not going to open. Vic, are you saying I was rude? Well, you have to admit, Eleanor, that morning you were acting like a bit of a... A what? Rhymes with ditch. Well, it better not open or I'm coming back for you on your little trombone tour. So I take it you did eventually get the buffalo loaded into the truck. Oh, yeah. Eventually. You can handle them all by yourself, Vic? Yeah, no problem. Get out of here, huh? Vic, you're amazing. No sweat. Eleanor, you should put a warm jacket on. It's a new outfit, Michael. I'm not about to cover it up. It's very clever, Eleanor. It's the worst weather in the world. It could snow any minute. Well, it happens to be very warm. Don't say I didn't warn you. No, I won't. Trust me, I'll be fine. Okay. Oh. Vic. Vic. We had Ron loaded onto the flatbed. We all got in the truck and headed for the Hernix. The what? The Hernix, the neighboring ranch. But the weather started turning rough, and the tiny truck was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew... Vic. 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 Sorry. So what happened then? Well, we were on the road for about an hour, when suddenly... With a 90% chance of rain, look for at least one to two inches with several feet of snow with a higher elevation. This one looks like a whopper, folks. Vic, is that how you really see yourself? Hey, it's my story. I can imagine myself any way I want to. What is it? White spruce, Captain. I see a glauca. Compact, nearly odorless, with scarcely distinguishable sapwood. Michael, storm's coming. Suggestions? We could cut our way through with phasers. Or we could wrap a chain around it and tow it off the road. 
Make it so. What are we gonna do? We're gonna go get him. Vic, the rope. Yes, Captain. No, wait a minute. We can't go after him. The storm's coming. You heard the radio? Relax, Eleanor. He headed into those trees. This won't take long. That's right. Those were his exact words. This won't take long. Some vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Let me recap, if I may. You were all going to have a vacation for the first time in a long time. Uh, yes. On the way, you were taking the buffalo to stud at a neighbor's ranch when it escaped. Yes. Yeah, right. And it was in the attempt of recovering the buffalo that you encountered bad weather and had to seek shelter here in this remote hunting cabin. You must be hungry. Want some chocolate? Oh, yes. Starving. The buffalo got out because the cord snapped, opening the gate. And the reason you needed this cord in the first place was because... Because Vic broke the latch. I didn't break the latch, Eleanor. Maybe not on purpose, but you should be a little more careful in the future. More careful? You were the one who jumped in the truck. W wait a minute. Time out. Now, what's the story about this latch? We're not talking about any latch here. We're talking about a four-inch plated steel hasp latch. The finest metallurgist in the land forged the highest gauge steel, coating it with an advanced galvanized zinc finish. Special care was given to molding the intricate corrugated leaf, ensuring it of a strength that would not triple, not quadruple, but virtually double the durability of an ordinary flat leaf hasp. Of over 10,000 latches produced that day, only one would pass the stringent testing process. The result was sheer perfection. So how did it break? Well, mm, that happened last Wednesday, the first time we drove out to the Hernix Ranch. And this is what really happened. Hello. No wonder it's cold in here. That furnace is broken. Yeah, just a second. He just walked in. Hang on. It's that Judy woman. Again. Well, who is she? Why does she keep calling? That's really none of your business, is it? <laughs> no, I guess you're right. Sorry. Nicole, are you coming with me? Sure. I'll be right there. Wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going over to the Hernix. Mr. Hernix offered to pay stud service for our buffalo. You never told me that. Sure I did. He's had the female buffalo for over a year now. He wants to breed them. He says he likes their cheese or something. Forget it. You're not doing it. Relax, Michael. Ronnie's going to have a good time. We can use the extra money. Toodles. Eleanor. Hi, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday night. Okay. Okay. Okay, see. So what about the latch? I'm getting to that. Would you mind picking up the pace a bit? You're like a lineman returning a fumble. Well, maybe I should tell it. Good idea. Okay. The whole incident happened a few minutes later. I was with Nicole waiting by the back of the truck. You don't. Pick a song, I'll nail it in two weeks. Home on the range. Fine. One week. All right, one week. If I can't play it, you get your hundred bucks. But if I can, you give me your hat. You never been one to back down on a bed, Ernie Hernick. Don't start now. Vic, Nicole, let's 
go. But well, wait, what about the... I uh, said let's go. Well, so we'll see you on Saturday. Oh, then. yeah, don't hold your breath. That's when the Wheaton Terrier came running. <laughs> Eleanor jumped into the cab, hit the reverse, and the truck went back. Eleanor, get down! Dang! The impact broke the latch. That's not the way it happened. You've got it all wrong. What? First of all, it wasn't a Wheaton Terrier. And he didn't even tell her about the tanks. What tanks? Vic, Nicole, change your plans. We're heading back. What? What about the buffalo? Well, we're going to bring Ronnie out here. It's better for Elsa. So we'll see you Saturday then? Sounds great, Mr. Hernick. Uh... Call me Heinrich. Heinrich Hernick? <laughs> <laughs> I clearly remember when I grabbed the plank to protect everyone from that charging Rottweiler, I dislodged the liquid nitrogen tanks that were being stored against the fence. You okay? The liquid nitrogen must have fallen and burst open and frozen the latch so much that when Vic grabbed hold of it, it shattered. Liquid nitrogen? Well, it was some kind of liquid. All right, all right. So the latch got broken. Who was supposed to fix it? Vic. Vic. Always me. Same old story. Something breaks, call Vic. So why didn't you fix it? Too busy playing that trombone. No. Too busy doing other things. Right now? Nicole's leaving the ranch tomorrow. I want to be there for the last day. I do not know. I am pretty busy, Walt. Pick me up. Please. Pretty please. All right. I can be a saint, too. I will be there. Great. Thanks, Vic. You are welcome, Walt. Here's the address. For what? The Homer Travel Agency in Mission. They've got an envelope waiting for me. I, I want you to pick it up. Right now? Yes, right now. I, I would do it, but I'm too busy doing the inventory that Michael was supposed to do. He's probably too busy on the phone with that Judy woman. Are you off duty? I am beaming into town. No, change of plans. You're needed in engineering. Furnace is offline. But Eleanor said... Forget Eleanor. She's expendable. Fix the furnace. Go into town. Pick me up. Fix the furnace. Go into town. Pick me up. The Everybody furnace. wanted something from me. I didn't know where to turn. My mind was reeling from responsibility and chaos spiraling in doom. It got to the point where I felt like the only friend I had left in the world was my good old trombone. No, no, Vic! <laughs> I didn't mean to, Vic. Is it? It's bent. I just hope it isn't broken. So it appears that the latch never got fixed, because you all had your own game plan to attend to. Well, like I said before, we had some vacation time coming up, and, and we had a lot of things to do before then, so, well, it was all pretty hectic. That true, Doc? Oh, some of us were more hectic than others. Michael, I need you to help me with the inventory. Eleanor, I told you, I've got to fix the furnace. See, we've got to put our orders in now, or else the kids are going to come in by the time we finish Eleanor, our vacation. Eleanor, you're forgetting. You are going on vacation. I'm not. I'm going to be here all week. I'll do the inventory then. No, we need to do the inventory now. Get Vic to help you. I can't. I've already sent him on an errand. An errand? Well, he's picking up something at the travel agency for, you know, for me. And, and, and then he said something about picking up Walt in Vancouver. Well, then, why don't you go to the travel agent by yourself? Because, Michael, I am doing the inventory that you were supposed to do yesterday. Eleanor, listen to me. I checked the barometer, and it's dropping. 
That means a front is coming in. That means it's going to get very cold. I've got to fix the furnace or I'll freeze to death. The inventory can wait. I'll get that. Hello? Just a minute, please. Michael, it's that woman, Judy. I can take oh. a message. No, 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 I can. I can. Well, what about... What about the furnace? Hello. Did you ever get the furnace fixed? No. How'd it go? No, oh, not good. <clears throat> I think I might have to replace the whole darn no. thing. Did you make this? Yeah. Looks great. Yeah. Where is everybody? Um, I think Walt went to the bunkhouse to put his stuff away. Vic is upstairs. And <sighs> Eleanor is. Well, I'm right here, and the inventory's finished. No thanks to you. Okay, I'm all tucked in. Whew. Is it cold in here, or is it just me? Oh, Who's that? I'm gonna go crazy, I swear. That's Vic. He bought a trombone. That's a trombone? Yes, yeah. not again, please. Oh, Vic! Vic! What? Dinner's ready. I'm not hungry. Oh, come on, Vic. Try eat, it. Vic, please. Sit down and eat. Have some to eat, Vic. Give it a rest. That's oh, the boy. Oh, did she? Yeah. yeah. Do you think you could Thank cook you. this? Oh. Do you Thank mind? You. Oh. Oh. It was pretty hectic those last few days. Everyone was at each other's throats. We just couldn't wait to get away from each other for a while. Watch the outfit. It's expensive, you know. Sorry. Just... Hey, Vic, are we going or what? In a minute. You said that ten minutes ago. What's the rush, Walt? I told you. I gotta do something in the city. Well, don't worry. We'll get out of here as soon as we get Ron loaded, okay? We'll do it already. Where's the big guy? Where's Michael? Oh, I don't know. He's probably on the phone. Well, there he is. Guys, remember, communication's a two-way street. Thanks, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Yo, Michael. Yeah? Let's go. Yeah. The Hernicks are waiting. Eleanor, do you think this is such a good idea? You know how hard it is to transport a buffalo, and Ron doesn't like to travel. I don't care. Do we have to do this? Michael, we need the money. How many times do I have to tell you that? Money, money, money. That's all I ever think about. You know that. Get out of the way. The whole time we've been out here, all you can think about is yourself. Oh. Ever since we got into trouble, as far as Michael's concerned, it's look out for number one. True. All right, Miss James, we'll go back to you. In exactly what way was Dr. Terry inadequate once you got into trouble? Well, for one thing, the enormous tree across the road that Vic described was an exaggeration, to say the least. Oh, oh my God! God. A tree! Run for your lives! <laughs> It's just a sapling, for crying out loud. Just pick it up and take it off the road. One, two, three. So at this key moment, when the buffalo actually broke out of the truck, there was nobody paying attention. I was. I warned them. Michael! The gate! Run! Run! What do we do? We get him! Get him! Get him! I'll just leave them. We'll go to the Hernix and we'll raise No, I'm going to go get him. It won't take long. I'll go with you. I can play my trombone and lure him back to the truck. Uh, just leave them. The weather's turning. Michael, you don't know this area. We're all gonna get lost. Silly goose. Which, as you know, was exactly what happened. We wouldn't have gotten lost if Eleanor stayed with us. Well, I knew which way Ron went. They just wouldn't listen to me. So we had to go look for her, and then go look for the buffalo. But I almost found the buffalo, too. I could hear him. He was right up ahead of me. So what happened? She tripped. Twisted her ankle. Twisted my ankle? 
That's what you call it? Run! 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 Oh! I barely escaped with my life, if you want to know the truth. And you didn't care. You didn't even try and kill the snake. Snake? Forget her. But Michael, we got a buffalo to find, mister. Now give me a break. She tripped and fell into a bush. I was hurt. And we had to carry her because she couldn't walk. And that's when the storm hit. Luckily, we found this place. I was hurt, Michael, but you don't care. All you can think about is yourself. You were the one who wanted to move the... I didn't want to move the buffalo. You did. Oh, well, it would have been a problem moving the buffalo if the latch hadn't have broken. Don't start that again, Eleanor. I didn't break it. No, and you didn't fix it either. All right, She's stop right. it. Yeah. Stop it. You're all yelling at each other. Nobody even knows anything anyway. Well, I'm sick of it. Nicole? Okay. Nicole, what are you doing? Nicole, come here. Get her. fingers she's all right you could have froze out there it's better than being in here listening to you guys we're sorry about that nicole we're all sorry it's just the last couple of days yeah we're, we're cold and we're tired and we're hungry yeah, you're kind of wacky i'm right at well, we'll be all right we're gonna get through this <laughs> you just don't get it get what honey? you keep telling the story over and over again but you're leaving out the most important parts you're too busy blaming each other for everything what parts? Well, like before, when you were telling everybody about your trombone, how you made that bet with Ernie, you left out part of the story, didn't you? Vic? There was a good Base reason Vic estimate. wanted that hat. Seven a very good pitches. reason. Very sensitive to pitch. Fluctuations. You'll never play it. Well, there you're wrong, Ernie. I'll have this thing mastered in no time. Hundred bucks says you don't. Pick a song, I'll nail it in two weeks. Home on the range. Fine. One week. All right, one week. If I can't play it, you get your hundred bucks. But if I can play it, you give me your hat. I ain't giving you my hat. Wouldn't Walt look good in a hat like that? Walt? He's always been telling me how much he'd love a cowboy hat. Well, I think it's high time he got one. I think he'd look great in it. My thoughts exactly. You've never been one to back down from a bed, Ernie Hernick. Don't start now. <laughs> you wanted to win that hat for me? He said that you give so much, that it would be nice if somebody gave something to you for a change. That's why he was practicing so much. He only had a week to learn how to play it. And I went and stepped on it. Sorry, Vic, that would have been a really nice surprise. Yeah, well, he wasn't the only one who had a surprise planned. Vic! Vic, when are we gonna hit the road? In a minute. You said that ten minutes ago. What's the rush, Walt? I told you, I got something I ain't got to do in the city. Well, don't worry, we'll get out of here as soon as we get Ron loaded. Then let's do it. Why don't you tell him what those plans were? He had a little party plan back at 1117. A party for you. Me? Why? Oh, uh, Vic, I'm sorry, I totally forgot. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It wasn't my birthday. But it was a very special day, wasn't it, Walt? Ken and I managed to get some of your poems published in Street Scene magazine. My poems? Really? Yeah. They loved them. The issue was due out Saturday, and Pin had planned a surprise back in the city. You know, we had balloons and hats and 
donuts. I can't believe it. I mean, I, I never thought. I'm published. <laughs> Congratulations, Vic. You guys are amazing. I had no idea you were planning all this. Yeah, well, that's not the only thing that was going on at the ranch. Oh. Like what? <clears throat> oh, like Judy. What? Michael, it's uh, that woman, Judy. Oh, great. Well, who is she? Why does she keep calling? That's really none of your business, is it? Fine. Nicole, are you coming with me? Yeah, sure. I'll be right there. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Saturday night. <laughs> okay. 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 Okay, see you. Bye. What you didn't hear was the rest of the conversation. No, the plane doesn't leave till 9. Yeah, so if you can meet me at 11.17 and give me the dress, then I'll give it to her on the uh, on the way to the airport. Okay, great, dude. Thanks. See ya. Bye. What? Judy's a ranch kid from before your time. She runs a dress shop downtown now. He was going to buy you a dress. Really? It's a gift for Seattle. For me? No, for Vic. Oh. <laughs> Don't make a big deal about it, Eleanor. And that was nothing compared to what Eleanor had planned for you. For me? Oh, Michael, come on, the inventory. Eleanor, I read the barometer. It's dropping. That means a front is moving in. That means it's going to get cold. That means I've got to fix the furnace or I'm going to freeze to death. The inventory can wait. But the inventory couldn't wait. Why not? Because you weren't going to be home to do it. Why? Yeah. Remember that errand I sent Vic on to go to the travel agency? Well, he was actually picking you up a, a plane ticket. She bought you a round-trip ticket to Hawaii. I just figured that since you're always cold, I'd send you someplace warm for your vacation. Huh. How could you afford that? Well, that's why we were taking Ron in for stud service. So what about this latch? Oh. Well, it wasn't a Wheaton Terrier that jumped out at us. Or a Rottweiler. Well, was it then? It was a duck. I don't think he bites, Eleanor. I, I, I knocked over a bunch of old gas cans, and, and they fell. You broke the latch? Yep. Why didn't you tell us? I did. You did? Twice. But you were so busy arguing, you never stopped to listen. I guess you forgot. Communication is a two-way street. Listen. I don't hear anything. The storm has stopped. <laughs> oh, the sun's breaking through. Oh, good. With this sky clear, the search team will find us quicker, and the Dallas Cowboys find Jim Kelly. Yeah, so what do we do until then? Vic, when are you supposed to play for that bet? Today. Oh, Vic! Today. Play. Yeah, no, no, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.